Remnant 2. Bro, what the fuck was that? Remnant 2, my broskies. I was so excited to get into this game when it released because I was one of the few people who randomly stumbled upon the original game, which was called From the Ashes, way back when, when it was on the PlayStation Plus ecosystem. So years later, when I heard that they're making a sequel that apparently takes everything good in the first game and then just turns it up a freaking notch and makes it better in every single way as a true sequel should do, I got excited. Now, before we get into this, this one i do want to recommend to maybe watch the original wtf is first impressions video of remnant 2 that's on the channel to kind of get an idea of the impressions of the game or my impressions more so and what the opening hours were like for me because this is a retrospective deep dive into the game not really all that deep it's pretty shallow at the end you can kind of see the difference of my opinions and if it has fulfilled any and all of my expectations that i set for myself of course link to that video will be on the top right corner right there <laughs> click it or cue it up at least now without any more filler mumbo jumbo that will potentially help me hit the 10 minute mark let's get on with the freaking review now first things first i'll go out and say it there's a lot to like in this game but unfortunately there are also some things that just seem pointless to myself at least and they ended up affecting my overall playthrough as well as my overall thoughts on the game once the credits eventually roll now you might be asking to yourself damn this guy can't really get to the point can he and i am getting to the point right now so let's start off with at least the positives now in my first impressions video i did mention the game being a true sequel in taking everything that the original title did right and just boosting it up as remnant 2 just truly feels like a bunch more fun of a game it's a true sequel from the gameplay loop to going through the zones killing mobs and just the randomness of it all oh it's just so much fun to run through and shoot around like at no point in the game did i feel like i'm running through a slot or whatever the equivalent of a swamp level is in souls like games the different biomes or worlds as well as the zones within the worlds are all super nice looking overall and not laid out in the most confusing way possible like let's say for example and totally not because i want to plug the video here the lords of the fallen bro the map layout in that game is rough the worlds in this one are easy to navigate and in case you ever got lost for whatever reason there's a map as well like bro that's so cool how odd is it to have a map in a souls like game right the change of environment should be talked about more as the the art style and scenery changes were absolutely top tier in my opinion apart from maybe the sewer level underneath the town we interrupt this program with some breaking news it seems the awesome person watching this video has yet to subscribe to the channel or like the video and in an unprecedented turn of events he is now full on uh, thinking about it it is indeed free to do and would help me out a absolute Ton. I mean, it would help the person of the broadcast a lot. Uh, news. It's the news. Damn it. We will update you on more information once we get it. So, for now, let us return to the scheduled program towards the end of the game like that was just weird overall but levels like the shiny weird castle as well as the cube world and the weird autumn forest slash avatar world looking place was super awesome oh not to mention that weird level where you might just fall off the edge and the whole level is just basically a large boss arena like it's all so cool now the boss in that level was uh, maybe a bit cool in concept but in practice just a bitch to fight through it's so confusing now the enemy variety overall also per world was very nice and i have to admit that i mean they just end up being reskinned versions of the same monster over and over again but that does go a long way in terms of immersion in these types of games as for the plot in the game and the overall story now nah, broski i couldn't tell you the story even if the developers paid me to tell you the story like i'm not good at following stories what i can say is that it was surprisingly light-hearted and there are some jokes thrown around here and there that actually got me to giggle which is not really the most difficult thing but it did get me to giggle now playing the story in co-op is also cool because it shows the host talking to the npcs and you just standing aimlessly in the background which i found to be hilarious at times that was a nice addition in my opinion where you kind of felt like the third wheel at times and not the main protagonist as you were just the third wheel kind of tagging along and shooting people you were just there for the vibes and the bullets now speaking of shooting and bullets of course man shooting in this game just feels tight enough not to have you blame the developers once you die every blue moon now throughout my playthrough 
through the gunplay in general felt like there is a certain oomph to it and I really liked it. I mentioned in the original video about connecting all pellets of a shotgun or unloading a whole mag of my LMG on a group of features feeling just super satisfying and I can happily stand by those words at the end of the game. Thankfully this core gameplay loop element is very well executed. Now the same can't really be said for the melee in the game which seems like an afterthought but seeing as you'll be shooting for most of your time in the game the fact that the melee feels quite bland can be forgiven. Now what can't be forgiven at all in this game is the difficulty or more like the lack thereof and I do hope I'm saying that correctly. Now obviously it can be forgiven. I'm just being very overly dramatic for the sake of this video and this rant but yes the difficulty in the game I did not find the game to be at all difficult at any point. Coming towards the end of the game probably the last level or the last stretch in the last level as well as the last boss which I'll get into soon really all that difficult broski. I know I know co-op and playing in co-op does factor into this but I'm sure if you truly lock in during your gameplay sessions you'll find it to be a breeze to run through. I mean maybe not a breeze but like a semi-strong gust of wind that would last for about 16 ish hours. Now speaking of lasts bro the last level in the game like I said just a minute ago bro what the fuck was that last level like freaking spam fist anyone now in general i absolutely love the bosses in remnant 2 all of them have different settings mechanics and were just a joy to fight it was the exact opposite of everything you have gone through so far in the game and it just felt very out of place now the first phase in the fight is manageable and does look epic admittedly but then the second phase is just dumb especially and super freaking especially when comparing to all the other awesome bosses that the game has thrown at you so far also i do have to mention this yet again and i feel like i'm the i'm the person who just keeps repeating this like a madman but having the last level of a game be basically just a boss run is just not good game development bro like this game lords of the fallen lies of p and so many other games do the same exact thing of just using the last level to throw bosses at you like non-stop like why though it just feels odd that's how anyway that's a whole nother topic for a whole nother video that i should probably do in the future but what was i talking about uh, the difficulty yes i mean the difficulty does bring me to another thing as well which i noticed while playing this game is that it kind of really is built and designed around multiple playthroughs and re-rolling the biomes you go through i mean i'm all for new game plus and some games do benefits from that idea a lot but this game has content locked away behind multiple playthroughs like bro in the first impressions video i talked about the needlessly convoluted way of unlocking classes in the game and i gotta tell you bro it does not get any less convoluted loaded like throughout my whole playthrough apart from the base classes in the game i managed to unlock one extra class in the gunslinger now that's not even half the classes that are available in the game and add to that the idea that unlocking some of these classes like the engineer for example is almost purely based on rng and just getting lucky in finding a certain item in a certain biome or a rerolled version of a biome like why lock so much of the potential enjoyment of the game behind rng i just ended up using the hunter class in conjunction with the berserker class because i just couldn't be asked honestly to change my class or the abilities after the first like five hours in the game now again the concept is very cool and works on paper and yes it does reward the hardcore gamer for just playing the game more but for me as a casual but not really so casual gamer who's already finding it difficult enough to find time to actually play all these freaking games releasing on top of the eternal backlog of games that i have kind of forcing me to play the game through multiple times or through multiple runs is maybe a bit naive from their part i don't know maybe it's just me so please do let me know in the comments down below what you think of this concept of multiple playthroughs and or having content locked away behind multiple playthroughs like i really do want to know if i'm just tripping tripping or or if it's actually there is incentive to do that anyway back to the gameplay and the gear most of the loot you find in the game are pretty much just crafting components and jewelry and these allow you to upgrade weapons and tweak your class to be just the way you want it to be and i found that to be quite nice i mean I mean, personally i didn't find any reason to change away from my lmg that i found pretty early on in the game mow down enemies bro it just mows down 150 bullets like coming your way full velocity poison bullets bro come on there's no chance of me changing weapons changing the individual abilities in your weapons as well as the synergy you find in different rings and necklaces it was all just fun to try and find the best mix of rings to flaunt at my enemies like a freaking rapper even if the actual cosmetic changes to your character are pretty minimal now all that's been said and repeated in this video is cool and all but at the end of the day it all boils down to is the game fun to play or not right i mean 
no game is inherently perfect of course. There are always bound to be faults in every experience because what is considered good in games is just very subjective in general and does change depending on the player first of all but also the mood of the player at any given time. To this end I can't say what your experience will be like of course but for me personally I found it to be a okay fun time and I have to be very honest with that. Like I've said or alluded to extensively in this video already what's good is very good from the overall gunplay to the exploration, scenery and to some extent the micromanaging of stats is all fun and I never found that to be a slog in, in my playthrough. Now the game is nowhere near as difficult on the base setting as other souls like games so there is no frustration in clearing zones like you would get in let's say a lords of the fallen which again this is a shameless plug to that video please do queue it up to watch after this one i've already done two videos on that so be sure to check those out after this one if you're at all interested which hopefully you are now all the things i mentioned that were maybe not so good in this game do unfortunately detract from the overall experience in terms of fun factor because there's such obvious things and not really minor ones that you can just brush over like i said before the class unlocking is just straight up ass in my opinion and is just so needlessly convoluted like bro i'm still not over that fact the last boss in the game also like why would you ruin uh, the end of the game like that like why would you go that route like bro i'm just getting heated just thinking about that now like damn it does detract a lot from the overall experience and like even now just reading through the script of the video bro i'm so torn on remnant 2 because on one hand the moment to moment gameplay loop is so much fun like just the shooting just going around with your co-op partner or even solo it's fun overall it's a memorable experience in that sense but then the highs are super high it's like a weird trippy drug it's like the highs are super high but afterwards the lows bro the lows have you dragging your face on the ground running out of breath anyway that's just me rambling yet again bro should you play this game that's the real question but how the fuck should i know that pretty much just wraps it up for this video yet again i do apologize for my raspy voice i'm still recovering from being ill a few weeks back and i'm still coughing my freaking lungs out every chance i get hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did be sure to click that like button down below subscribe to the channel as well as comment comment on what part of the world you're from and if you like my accent no i'm just kidding bro comment on if you like this game if you liked remnant 2 if you've played the first one second one if your overall experience and op opinions opinions on the game let me know like recent videos we've had such good conversations down below some arguments as well or i would like to call them debates of course so do let me know what you think of this game what you think of this video down below in the comments i hope you guys have a great day wherever you're from whichever time of day you watch this at bro i'm still just rambling i've been your boy from gamers trove see you guys in the next upload hasta prontaisimo